Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. x cubed equals 9x plus 12 and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting at least two methods and let's see if we can come up with a third one. But anyways, let's start with the first method. I'm going to go ahead and use the cubic formula for this. And it's going to be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and put the 9x on the left and isolate the constant. And then we want to make this equation look like the following. a plus b cubed minus 3ab times a plus b equals a cubed plus b cubed. So this is the identity we're going to use. And notice that if I call a plus b x, then my equation is going to be x cubed minus 3abx equals a cubed plus b cubed. So one of the solutions to this equation is going to be x equals a plus b. Does that make sense? So let's go ahead and compare this equation to this one. And we notice that the coefficient of x is negative 9 and negative 3ab. So negative 3ab is equal to negative 9, which implies ab is equal to 3. So that's the product of ab we found. And then we, ne we do need the sum of ab or something like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the constant. The constant is 12 here and a cubed plus b cubed here. So a cubed plus b cubed is supposed to be 12. So the question then becomes, can we find two numbers that satisfy this system? And the answer is yes. And always yes, because this turns into a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and find out. First, I want to isolate the b and there's obviously different ways to do it. You could also cube both sides in the first equation. You're going to get a cubed times b cubed equals 27. And then from the second equation, you can isolate one of these and then plug into this equation and then you'll be able to get the solution. But I'm going to use a different method today, a little different than what I did earlier b is equal to 3 over a. Let's go ahead and replace b with 3 over a. And then from here, we get a cubed plus 27 over a cubed equals 12. Can you think of a number a that will satisfy this? Hopefully you did find one. But I'm going to use substitution. Let's go ahead and set a cubed equal to c. Right? So from here, we're going to get c plus 27 over c, hopefully you see what I see, equals 12. And then, now we can go ahead and multiply everything by c to turn this into a quadratic equation. And we get c squared plus 27 equals 12c. And then c squared minus 12c plus 27 equals 0. Awesome. Now we can go ahead and solve for c here, pretty easy negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, 144 minus 4ac, that's going to be 108. Subtract, you're going to get 36. The square root of 36 is actually 6. So we get 12 plus 6 divided by 2 and 12 minus 6 divided by 2. This is going to give us 9 and this is going to give us 3. Awesome. The c values are integers. Beautiful. This is kind of rare. But now where do we go from here? We got the c values, and what is c? c is equal to a cubed. But of course, a and b are interchangeable, so c is also b cubed. So we're going to pick one of these values for a and the other one for b, since it doesn't matter. So let's go ahead and set this equal to, for example, a cubed, and set the other one equal to b cubed. And from here, you get a is equal to cube root of 9, and b is equal to cube root of 3. Okay? In other words, one of them is the square of the other. Now, what do you do with those? Remember, x is equal to a plus b. Remember, we said that when we turn the equation uh, using the identity, we said that x equals a plus b is one of the solutions because a cubic should have three solutions, but this method allows you to find one of them. I'll show you how to find the other solutions in a little bit. But from here, x becomes a plus b. Therefore, one of the solutions to this equation, which was x cubed equals 9x plus 12, is the cube root of 9 plus the cube root of 3. 
So this is one of the solutions. Let's go ahead and check how we can find the other solutions. Obviously, there is different ways to do it. One method would be you can go ahead and take this polynomial and kind of divide it by the linear term, which is, by the way, is going to come from this other solution or the only solution we found. So you can kind of divide by this because if cube root of 9 plus cube root of 3 is a solution, then subtract everything, put everything on the same side and set it equal to 0, you'll get the factor. Factor theorem tells us that if x equals a is a solution, then x minus a is a factor, right? Okay, so now this is going to be a little painful, but you, it's doable, and this is going to give you a quadratic. Of course, it's going to start with x squared, and then you're going to have other terms. So from here, you can find the other solutions. And then another way to do it is using Vieta's formulas, which I know a lot of people like. So Vieta's formulas works as follows. If you have a cubic equation, the sum x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 is given by negative b over a. By the way, b is the coefficient of x squared, but there's no x squared in the equation, which means b is 0. So x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 0, and the product x1, x2, x3 is given by negative d over a, because it's negative b over a, c over a, and then negative d over a, they alternate. So it's going to be 12. So since we know one of the solutions, we can go ahead and find the other one. So let us let me show you. Uh, since x sub 1, and which one do you want to take? This as x sub 1 is fine. We can go ahead and replace x sub 1 with cube root of 9 plus cube root of 3. And then from here, we're going to get the sum of these two numbers and the product of the same numbers. And then we'll, we can set up a system. But guess what? It's going to give you the exact same quadratic that you will obtain here. This is going to be a lot easier in my opinion. Okay? Cool. Now, is there another way to solve this problem? Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So we have a cubic equation, and this is kind of like a nice cubic because it's missing the x squared terms. It's kind of like a depressed cubic, right? So if you have a depressed cubic and you expect to get nice results, one of the things you can always try is rational root theorem. So pretend you don't know what happened with the first method, okay? Let's say this is a fresh start. I would probably check for rational solutions, such as what are factors of 12, right? It will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 12, and then they're negative. So it's kind of like a plus minus. So there's basically 12 candidates. That's a lot of numbers to check. But if you plug in a couple, you're going to realize quickly there are no rational solutions. So, I mean, rational root theorem is not always going to work. Sometimes it's going to fail. But anyways, another method could be try to factor this as follows, like you can kind of write it, I don't think we needed parentheses there, but we're going to need them now. You can kind of try to factor it into some linear x minus a, and then another quadratic x squared plus bx. By the way, here you could put a c, or you could write 12 over a, because when they're multiplied, they're going to give me negative 12. So you can go ahead and distribute and of course, there's not going to be an x squared term, so the coefficient of x squared is going to be 0. But you only have two variables you should be able to solve as a system. And this should also give you the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. And here's the graph of these two functions. They intersect at a single point. You know what that means? That means the other solutions are not real. And this really brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.